Welcome to this second series of videos on the definite integral where we are going to be learning an algebraic approach for finding the definite integral. In this video we're going to continue to connect the idea of area with the integral and again we're going to develop an algebraic approach. So far we have a geometric approach which works fine if the function is made up of rectangles, triangles, and trapezoids, but most functions aren't. And then we have a numerical method which we call the Riemann sum which we can use when the geometric approach won't work, but this method is a little bit tedious and um, it would be much nicer if we can come up with an algebraic method. So we learned in the last series of videos that the notation for the definite integral is the integral from a to b of f prime of x dx and this equals the area between the rate graph and the x-axis. And it also, also equals the total change in value of the function, the original function, not the derivative function, between a and b. So in order to come up with a method for um, doing this process algebraically, let's look at an example. Here's our example. It says the marginal cost function for the manufacture of MP3 players is given brought by c prime of x equals 25 minus x over fifty dollars per player. So we have dealt with this marginal cost function before and here x is the number of mp3 players manufactured. So our first method that we're going to use is we're going to use geometry to find the total change in cost if the production is increased from 300 mp3 players to 500 mp3 players. So whenever we're using a geometric method, we first need to make sure that a geometric method is appropriate, and we do that by looking at the area that we're trying to find and, and um, graphing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in for my y1 my marginal cost function, so I have 25 minus x over 50, and then I'm going to set my window, so I'm going to make my window go from 0 to 500. I could also just make it go from 300 to 500, but I like to see 0. And my x scale is going to be 100, and my y min is going to be 0, and y my, my y max is going to be 25. I can tell that that'll work because this is just a linear function, and it starts out at 25 and it gradually goes down from there. We could also go do zoom fit and that'll get us a, a window that'll uh, work. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph. So when we graph, we get this, and I've got this, this graph uh, right over here. So I have gone in and I've labeled these x values here, and up here this is 25. So we're looking for the area between our marginal cost function, which is our rate graph, and the x-axis between 300 and 500. So let's go ahead and put in the sides of our region here. So let's pretend that's a straight line. And we have another straightish line over here. So this is the area that we're trying to find. And this will represent the total change in value between 300 and 500. So the notation for this is 300 to 500 and we have our c prime of x dx and this is going to equal this area here. So this is a trapezoid so we're going to have one half our base, our base here that is 200 and then we need to have the sum of our heights Okay, so we need to know what the height is at this y value. So this y value is going to equal the height of that side, and the height here, which is this y value. Let's use our calculator to, to give those to us. So I'm going to press trace, and I want to go to 300. So I can just type in 300. And my y value there is 19. So this, the height on the left here, this side is 19. So I'm going to have 19. And then the height on the right, I just need to find the y value at 500. So the y value at 500 
is 15. So this side over here is 15. What we end up with here is I have 1 half times 200 is 100. And 19 plus 15, this is 34. So this is 3,400. And our units here are dollars. So this means that the total change in cost, if we increase the production from 300 to 500 MP3 players, the total change in cost is going to be $3,400. Now this does not tell us that the cost of 300 or 500 is $3,400. It tells us that when we go from 300 to 500, this is the additional cost that is incur incurred. So let's look at this same problem using a different method. Okay, so our second method is going to be to use the antiderivative. So we have done a problem similar to this where we have are given a cost function, a marginal cost function, and then we have to figure out what our original cost function is. So what we did was we said, okay, well, the cost function is going to be the antiderivative of the marginal cost function. So we're going to have the antiderivative of 25 minus, I'm going to write this x over 50 as 1 over 50x dx. Now notice that this is an indefinite integral, not a definite integral, because I don't have limits on the lower and upper end of my integral sign. So continuing here, the, what I need to do in order to find my cost function is to find this antiderivative. So I have 25x minus 1 50th, and then I have x squared over 2 plus some constant. So we're going to call that constant k. So this gives us 25x minus 1 over 100x squared plus k. So in the past, when we've done a problem like this, we have extra information that will allow us to find k. We actually don't have any extra information this time, but we can still solve this problem. Let's move up a little here. If we're trying to go from 300 MP3 players to 500 MP3 players, what I'm actually trying to do is I'm trying to find the, the change in cost. So that change in cost is going to equal C of 500 minus C of 300. That's the total change in cost. Okay, well we can do that. We can find C of 500 minus C of 300. All we do is pl we plug in 500 here and then we plug in 300. So notice I have C of 500 plugged in here, and here I have C of 300. And when I simplify here, notice what happens to the Ks. When I simplify here, this is what I get for my C of 500. This is what I get for my C of 300. Simplifying further, I have 10,000 plus K minus 6,600 minus K, and these two Ks cancel each other out. So what I end up with is just 10,000 minus 6,600, which is that same $3,400 that I ended up with when I did this problem the other method, the other way. So the really powerful thing that we have here is that if we're trying to find the antiderivative, I'm sorry, if we're trying to find the definite integral from 300 to 500 of c prime of x dx, all I needed to do was find the antiderivative and then subtract the values at the two limits. So it's the antiderivative, so that's regular c of x, c of 500 minus c of 300. So that is our algebraic method. We don't have to do any Riemann sum. We don't have to break it down in terms of triangles, rectangles, and trapezoids. All we have to do is find the antiderivative of the function and then plug in these two values. What we've just learned here is what's called the fundamental theorem of calculus. Really important name, right? And 
we get tired of writing it, so we write FTOC for Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. And this tells us that if we're trying to find the definite integral of some function f of x dx from a to b, what we need to do is we need to find the antiderivative of our function and then find that antiderivative at the upper limit minus the antiderivative at the lower limit. Our method is going to be to first find the antiderivative and we're going to put it in parentheses with a vertical bar to the right. So uh, what, what this will look at is look like is so suppose if we were using the same example 300 to 500 of 25 minus x over 50 dx. What I'm going to do is I'm going to first find the antiderivative of the 25 minus x over 50, which is 25x minus x squared over 100. And we're going to put this in parentheses just like this. And then we're going to have a vertical bar to the right. So I'm going to have a vertical bar to the right. And I'm going to have my limits connected to that vertical, vertical bar. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the 500 here and then plug in the 300 here so I'm going to plug in the 500 into this function plug in 300 into this function subtract and then we have our answer so let's look at this for a specific example so this first one we are supposed to evaluate the definite integral from negative 3 up to 2 of x squared minus 2 dx so what I said is the first thing we're do, going to do is find the antiderivative. So the antiderivative of that is 1 third x cubed minus 2x. Now we don't have to worry about the plus c because remember in that previous example where we were finding the marginal cost and we, we used plus k instead of plus c, what happened to those k's? they canceled out. That's right. And so we don't need to have the plus c in here because it's just going to cancel out. Then we're going to have the vertical bar and then we're going to have the lower limit and the upper limit. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up two sets of parentheses like this with a subtraction sign in between. And I'm going to plug in my upper limit over here and my lower limit over here. So I'm going to have one third times 2 cubed minus 2 times 2 and then over here I'm going to have 1 third times negative 3 cubed minus 2 times negative 3. Now we're going to simplify. So I have, let's see, 2 cubed is 8 so that's going to give me 8 thirds minus, that's 4, over here I have um, one-third times negative three cubed. Negative three cubed is negative 27 divided by three that's negative nine. So that gives me negative nine and then that's going to be plus six. So simplifying further we have eight-thirds minus four. Let's see that gives us negative three in there. So minus a negative three that's plus three and so I have eight-thirds minus 1, which is 8 thirds, minus 3 thirds, and I have 5 thirds is my answer. So the value of this definite integral is 5 thirds. So here's a second one. You might pause the video and see if you can do this one totally on your own. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I would do before I even start working is I would rewrite this thing because it's always easier to use the power rule if I have that this term here rewritten as 2x to the negative 2 and then I have plus 3x dx. So if you haven't paused already go ahead and pause and see if you can finish up. So I've got this almost done now from here on it's a whole bunch of arithmetic so one thing that might be helpful is if you remember how to use your calculator to do this. So I'm just going to type this in exactly like I see it. So our answer here is 40 thirds, so I just typed it in exactly like I saw it, then I converted the answer to a fraction. One last example. 
Here I've got an exponential function. First I do my antiderivative, open up my double set of parentheses, plug in the value. So that's it for this video. See you next time.